Dear bishops, dear priests, and my dear sisters who are attending this retreat, the aroma of Christ 
I am really grateful to God for this online retreat and also I am really thankful to the National Service of Communion and especially to Father V.V. George for organizing this wonderful retreat, The Aroma of Christ for Bishops, Priests and Religious. And this is a beautiful topic. We all of us have to be the aroma of Christ, every baptized Christian. And in a special way, we, the priests, bishops, religious. And so, the topic that is given to me is obstacles to becoming the aroma of Christ. Before I proceed with the topic, I would like to invite each one of you to turn to our Blessed Mother and seek her maternal protection and guidance. As she listened to the word of God and pondered in her hearts, let the Spirit of the Lord come upon us and enable us to listen to this sharing, this talk, and then ponder about it. And so let us pray to our Blessed Mother. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. The blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us, sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. As I said, every baptized person and much more every anointed person and every consecrated person is to be the aroma of Christ. The fragrance of the risen Christ is in every baptized person. Because through the sacrament of baptism, we receive the life of the risen Christ. It is through the sacrament of baptism, our sins are forgiven, we are made holy. God the Father becomes our Father, we call him Abba Father, we become his children. And then we become the temple of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Lord comes upon us and dwells in us. And then we become the members of the mystical body of Christ, that is the church. And that's why we are called to be the aroma of Christ. What does the aroma of Christ mean in the Bible? In Genesis chapter 8 verse 21, we read, After the great flood, it had cleansed the earth of sin and Noah offered a sacrifice of thanksgiving to God. And you know what the Bible says about it? That God smelled the soothing aroma denoting that the violence and sin were replaced by peace and righteousness. Again in Philippians chapter 4, verse 18, Paul uses the same imagery as well, calling the gift sent to him by a church to help him out, a gift of money that was sent to help him. And so he says, it was a fragrant aroma. Imagine again, suggesting that their gift was like a sweet smelling thing pleasant to experience. This brings me to St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians chapter 5 in which Paul uses the very same analogy of smell to describe two things. First, he describes the idea of smell, fragrance to point out how pleasing the sacrifice of Jesus on our behalf was to God. In his letter to Galatians chapter 5 verse 1 and 2, he says, Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love. Just as Christ also loved you and gave himself up for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God as a fragrant aroma. See how beautifully St. Paul puts it. 
so he describes the offerings of jesus as a fragrant aroma to the father and he also describes how pleasing the life of the one who imitates christ to god and he describes from the letter to galatians chapter 5 verse 3 till the end of the chapter the idea that our life our death and our resurrection will also be like a fragrant aroma that is lifted up to god so i believe that being pleasing to god is very important to us we should be a pleasing offering to god so some of the ingredients necessary to create the aroma of christ that is so pleasing to god that we find in st paul's letter to ephesians chapter 5 and chapter 6 and in this st paul describes four ingredients to the aroma of christ four ingredients to the aroma of christ the first one he mention, mentions is purity in verse 2 and 3 of st paul's letter to the galatians chapter 5 paul explains that the ingredient to produce the aroma of christ in us is personal purity personal holiness free from all type of attachment purity is free from all self seeking paul says in verse 3 that the type of things that has to be removed from us in order to have the aroma of christ because these things are going to be the obstacles in becoming the aroma of christ that's why ephesians chapter 5 verse 3 he says but fornication and impurity of any kind or greed must not even be mentioned among you as is proper among saints see how beautifully st paul is telling us fornication and impurity of any kind or greed must not be even men- mentioned among you entirely out of place is obscene silly and vulgar talks but instead let there be thanksgiving be sure of this that no fornicator or impure person or one who is greedy that is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God let no one deceive you with empty words for because of these things the wrath of God comes on those who are disobedient he is talking about that is st paul is talking about improper sexual activity including lasciviousness lasciviousness you know and pornography pornography voyeurism he talks about greed and never having enough materialism swearing dirty jokes bad language nasty and derogatory remarks lewd behavior and speech and then he reminds them that it is for this kind of impurity that god punishes the people so these are the obstacles in becoming the aroma of christ that means purity personal holiness second ingredient that saint paul speaks about in his letter to the ephesians chapter 5 verse 15 to 20 is spirituality be careful he says be careful then how you live not as unwise people but as wise making the most of the time because the days are evil so do not be foolish but understand what the will of the lord is for you do not get drunk with wine for that is debauchery but be filled with the spirit 
as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, our life has to be a life of praising and thanking and living in the presence of the Lord always. That's the spirituality he is expecting. So, here Paul compares the feature of worldly, godless living to a spiritual lifestyle. So, worldly and godless lifestyle is an obstacle to become the aroma of Christ. That's why he is advocating to live a spiritual life. In the life without reference to God as spiritual things, men are careless in their ways. They don't seek after spiritual wisdom. They fail to recognize that the time is short and judgment is coming. Their greatest pleasure is to waste their life and time with parties and pleasures and drunkenness. Their favorite state of mind is anything, anything at all that has nothing to do with God. Paul is saying that that is the state of the world, that is how worldly people live. And so spirituality is another ingredient to become the aroma of Christ. Thirdly, he speaks about ordered living. Ephesians chapter 5 verses 22 and chapter 6 verse 9 till that time. And in that ordered living, he expects our life should be an ordered life. And we are all having different status in our life. According to our status, we need to live. We need to be faithful to the call that we have received. So he says, he says about wives, husbands, children, parents, employees, employers. That's what he says, wives, be obedient to husbands. Husbands, treat your wives as Jesus would treat the church. And then parents, with their children, children with their parents, their relationship and ordered life he is expecting. Employees and employees, masters and slaves. So that's what he is saying. It should be an ordered life. That living together. The presence of Jesus is seen in the daily orderliness of our life. Unbelievers don't come to the church. So they don't see you in the church, the way you sing, the way you pray, etc., etc. But they see your normal everyday life. And it is there you have to reflect the aroma of Christ to the people through your orderly life. So that is orderly life is the third ingredient that St. Paul is speaking about. Then fourth ingredient he speaks of perseverance. Perseverance in the faith that we have received. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 to 20 he speaks finally. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the vials of the evil. It is being strong in the Lord, firm in our faith, not wavering. Others have doubt about our commitment. And that should not be. People should be able to count on you to react as a Christian. And that's what he is expecting here. Persevering in our faith. Not to give up, but be firm in the faith that we have received through baptism. So these, according to St. Paul, these are the four ingredients. Purity, that is holiness of life, spiritual life, spirituality, a life of spirituality, an ordered living, and perseverance, this he uh, mentions as the ingredients to become the aroma of Christ. Now, to be the aroma of Christ, personal holiness is very important as St. Paul also points out. Without this, the efficacy of our mission will be hampered. So it's a must now. 
That's why Pope Francis also so beautifully came out with uh, uh, the universal call to holiness, Gaudate Exultate. So that is what the importance of universal call to every baptized Christian has to be holy. We read the book of Isaiah chapter 1 verse 15. When you stretch out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Even though you make many prayers, I will not listen, for your hands are full of blood. So, the holiness is required. We can pray, we can preach, we can do marvelous things, but if you are sinful, if you are not living a holy life, God is not going to hear that. Isaiah is very clear, when you stretch out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Even though you make many prayers, I will not listen, for your hands are full of blood. Again Isaiah chapter 59 verse 2, we read, Rather, your iniquities have been barriers between you and your God. So our sins are barriers between ourselves and our God. And your sins have hidden his face from you so that he does not hear you. Our sins are hiding his face from us so that he cannot hear us. So that's what the iniquities, the sins do to us. Again, Proverbs chapter 15 verse 8, we read, The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord, but the prayer of the upright is his delight. So the wicked and the upright. So the sacrifice of the wicked, the Lord does not accept. It's an abomination. But the prayer of the upright is his delight. In Psalm chapter 24, verse 3 to 4, we read, Who shall ascend to the mountain of the Lord, and who shall stand in his holy place? Those who have clean hands and pure hearts, who do not lift up their souls to what is false and do not swear deceitfully. Now, sin takes away the aroma of Christ in a person. When one commits sin, the anointing is lost. The consecration is taken away. So that's why it's very important to be away from sin because it's a, an obstacle it's a block in being the aroma of Christ. Now, sin. What is sin? Sin is to be in darkness, to be in oneself and being selfish. That's the first point I would like to make. Sin is to be in darkness, not to be in light. To be in oneself, not bothered about others. And that is being selfish. John chapter 3 verse 19 we read and this is the judgment that the light has come into the world and people loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. So people like to be in darkness because their deeds were evil but the light came but they have not accepted the light. Secondly, Sin is not taking the trouble to know the master. Not taking the trouble to know the master. We read in the book of Isaiah chapter 1 verse 2 and 3. We read, Hear, O heavens, and listen, O earth, for the Lord has spoken. I reared children and brought them up, but they have rebelled against me. The ox knows its owner, and the donkey its master's crib, but Israel does not know. My people do not understand. How beautiful it is. Sin is not taking the trouble to know God, know our master, know Jesus. That is sin. And that's why the, uh, Isaiah so beautifully said, the ox knows its owner, the donkey knows its master's crib, but my people do not know me. They have deserted me. Sin is separation from God, who is our father. Thirdly, sin is going against the plan of God, not being fruitful. 
is going against the plan of God and not being fruitful. Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 21 Concerning his vineyard, Prophet Jeremiah speaks, My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it and hewed out a wine vat in it. He expected it to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. Again, we have the same type of thing being said, God saying through the prophets, Isaiah chapter 5, verse 2, and also Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 21. In both the uh, references, you get the same uh, matter. He says, I have planted you like a choice vine, but you are yielding sour grapes. I have planted you like a choice vine, but you are yielding sour grapes because God had a plan. With that plan, he did things with you. and But you have become fruitless, not being fruitful, not being according to the plan of God. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11, that famous words, For surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans for your welfare and not for harm. To give you a future with hope. So, this is sin is going against the plan of God, not being fruitful. Fourthly, sin is disobedience to the commandments of God. First letter of St. John, chapter 3, verse 4. St. John says, Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Going against the law, going against the commandments. 1 Samuel, first book of Samuel, chapter 15, we read the disobedience of Saul. That's such a beautiful thing. Saul, God asked him to go and defeat the Amalekites. He defeats and he asks him to completely destroy them. But he brings the fatted sheaves and then when he was questioned he says I brought it to offer a sweet sacrifice to the Lord and then the Lord says obedience is better than sacrifice obedience obedience brings blessings that's why Saint Teresa of Calcutta she, say, she used to say to her sisters even if I make a mistake by transferring you to a place which you don't like to go do not commit a sin by disobedience. The transfer that she makes may be not a proper transfer or she calls it a mistake, not a sin. But if the sister disobeys and does not go, take up the transfer, that becomes not a mistake but a sin to her. Disobedience is sin. Obedience always brings blessing to one. So sin is disobedience to the commandments of God. I would like to go through, since what are the blocks uh, in becoming the aroma of Christ, I would like to just pass through cardinal sins which help us, we can examine ourselves and see how this cardinal sins within us, which really uh, blocks us to be the aroma of Christ. The first one, the cardinal sin, that is pride. Pride. Thinking that I am a superior. I am superior, others are all inferior. Or inordinate attachment to the self, that is pride. Inordinate attachment to the self, considering others as inferior, considering oneself as superior. The pride of the angels. So, and also now this present context, we are in the synodal process towards the synodal church and then synodal how Pope Francis has beautifully brought up and in that he is stressing upon clericalism which is a curse in the church clericalism is a is a uh, another way of pride because when we become clerics we become proud we are supposed to be the servants but we become masters 
and we start commanding others and so some sort of selfishness is so strong in us and that is the pride of being a priest being a consecrated religious etc in the book of sirak chapter 3 verse 28 we read when calamity falls the proud there is no healing for an evil plan to has taken root in him the book of numbers chapter 12 verse 1 we have that beautiful incident of aaron and miriam being jealous of moses and they speak ill of moses now god says now the man moses was very humble more than anyone else on the face of the earth he was such a mighty moses but he was a humble man more than anyone else on the earth that's what god says so god called the three of them to the tent and then he tells to aaron and miriam about moses with my servant moses i speak face to face why then were you not afraid to speak against my servant moses and god is upholding moses because he is the most humble person uh, than anyone else on the earth the humility so pride is a sin that really uh, blocks the aroma of christ saint augustine he says about what is the foundation of spirituality he was asked and he says he answers the first is humility the second is humility and the third is humility so humility is the foundation of spirituality so pride is one of the greatest obstacles to become the aroma of christ secondly the second cardinal sin greed greed we need material things to live in this world what is this creation god created this world for us the whole world the whole creation is a preparation of god to create me in his own image and likeness so i am in need of all these things this beautiful world this atmosphere this created realities and all these things and that's why god created they are needed for me to live in this world but we need food and other needs but when we make them as end instead of means it is sin that is greed the creator realities are for man they are only a means for man to live on this earth but when we make them as end in themselves that is greed judas was greedy james in book in his, james in his uh, letter he says chapter 4 verse 1 to 3 he says war why there is war in the society in the in the world war because of greed family quarrels due to fight for property consumeristic culture shopping malls today greed is everywhere man is not satisfied with what he has and there is so much of consumeristic culture everything he wants man is not going just to what he needs to live on the earth a decent life but he wants to amass everything inordinate attachment to the things of this world want to possess the greed of man has made poverty a reality so that's what we have to today see so greed is another cardinal sin that takes away the aroma of christ thirdly anger anger we need to be angry for right things displeasure showing displeasure ephesians st paul in writing in, in writing to the ephesians chapter 4 verse 26 says be angry but do not sin do not let the sun go down on your anger so anger is excessive feeling of displeasure revengefulness resentment that is anger st paul again in in his letter to the galatians chapter 5 verse 19 to 21 says if you are angry you will not inherit the kingdom of god so anger is a block 
unreasonable anchor is a block it takes away the aroma of christ st john chrysostom says as fire is put out by water we have to put out anger by meekness that's what st john chrysostom says now fourthly fourth cardinal sin that is jealousy envy jealousy is to feel sad at the good of others to feel sad at the good of others st paul would say what is the remedy jealousy everyone feels jealousy is natural if somebody says i don't feel jealous there is something wrong with that person jealousy is natural to feel sad at the good of other when someone does something great and everybody is praising there is some kind of irritation within and that is it but how to overcome jealousy st paul would say nip it at the bud nip it at the bud don't allow jealousy to give expression in your relationship and in your dealings and in your speaking words so nip it at the bud yes you feel sad but then you must overcome it and that's why st paul would say when you feel that you must realize the person has done and they are, he is being praised because of god's blessing because the gifts that god has given that person so ultimately when you praise that person you are praising god who has given that person the gift so praise be god in all his gifts that's how our attitude should be so in this way we should be we'll be able to overcome that emotional feeling feeling sad at the good of others st gregory the great he says from envy or born hatred calumny and detraction st paul writing to the philippians chapter 1 verse 15 says some proclaim christ from envy and rivalry but others from goodwill archbishop fulton sheen the famous preacher he says what rust is to iron moth to fool termite to wood and envy to soul it eats up the soul it will destroy it so we need to get rid of jealousy and that also jealousy will take away the aroma of christ it is the biggest block for us to be the aroma of christ fifth cardinal sin laziness sloth laziness we need to be disciplined regularity of our lives acadia the term that is used for spiritual sloth one doesn't want to grow laziness that in the parable of the talents the third servant who got one talent was a lazy servant he went and buried it and brought it and gave back he didn't multiply it so the lazy servant laziness not only to avoid sins but also to grow spiritually we need to grow we need to multiply our goods our talents our gifts our graces laziness is procrastination postponed it to next day sloth is a kind of spiritual laziness spiritual laziness we read in the second book of samuel chapter 11 the sloth of david david was a chosen specially chosen the beloved of god the most anointed of god but david was lazy that was the time of war time of battle he was supposed to be in the battle field but sloth gets gets into him becomes lazy and he remains back and he sends the army under the generalship of joab and so he is at home he is supposed to have been in the battle field which was his duty and then he sins with oreas wife and we know the whole story how david falls into sin because of laziness laziness leads us to evil and laziness takes away the aroma of christ we need to be people with vigor work hard work and that is it sixth um, uh, cardinal sin that is gluttony gluttony means inordinate indulgence in eating and drinking inordinate indulgence in eating and drinking living to eat not eating to live philippians chapter 3 verse 19 
it is said their god is their belly proverbs the book of proverbs chapter 23 verse 2 says when you sit down to eat with the ruler observe carefully what is before you and put a knife to your throat if you have a big appetite so that is self control gluttony is inordinate indulgence in eating and drinking so that also it takes away the aroma of christ the block the last one chapter 7th uh, cardinal sin lust lust is self destructive drive for pleasure self destructive drive for pleasure it is selfishness or we can call it perverted love it subordinates others for our pleasure our lady to jacinda our lady of in fatima our lady told to jacinda more souls go to hell due to sins of the flesh so lust is being promoted by the modern world modern trend father reniero candela massa cardinal now he says about the lust of the eyes learn to fast of the eyes not only from food he says the lord has given eyes to see everything some people might say that our eyes are given so we can see everything what is wrong in that yes but the lord has also given eyelids to close our eyes which we are not supposed to see we allow our eyes to feast on nudity it leads us to sin and bondages use eyelids when faced with the things that we should not see pornography internet addiction etc these are today rampant and so this is a cardinal sin when a person is addicted to pornography addicted to internet mobile wrong use of the media and all those things these are a real block in becoming the aroma of christ so we have gone through this uh, the various blocks the various uh, obstacles in becoming the aroma of christ we are in the synodal church and pope francis is so beautifully coming out with uh, one of the as we today is the priest religious we are uh, doing this making this retreat and i am speaking on the obstacles to be the aroma of christ i think we just need to take some of the points that pope francis is uh, telling us cautioning us clericalism he has been speaking as so much about clericalism in the church clericalism is not only among the priests the bishops but even among the religious of course bishops and priests are clerics but even among the religious clericalism is um, we are ordained as servants of the people of god we are the people of god and we are specially chosen we are ordained to serve the people that's our life not to command them not to use them clericalism is um, uh, that taking being proud about what the position that we are and then making others as slaves and doing everything a dominant attitude domineering attitude over others that is called clericalism that i am everything and others should listen to me and obey the synodal church everyone is the member of the church every baptized person is equal in the eyes of god every baptized person is a member of the mystical body of christ and so that equality that fraternity that has to be established today it is like the hierarchical that the um, uh, we we have the previously the pyramidal uh, understanding of the church though it is done away during vatican to still we are holding that take the example of um, priests in the parish i think we must give an examination of our conscience how am i in a priest uh, in a parish as a parish priest do i boss over others that is lay people do i empower the laity the lord has blessed them with so many talents so many things do i collaborate with them that parish is a faith community is a miniature of the church where everybody is equal where everybody is the people of god i am specially given and a responsibility to animate and lead and guide the parish the church 
And so what should be my role? That equality. Am I establishing that? In order to bring the aroma of Christ. In order to be the aroma of Christ. I need to build up that faith community. For example, the laity. I must be able to bring them up. Encourage them. Involve them. Give them equal opportunities. Listen to them. Enable them to feel that they are the people of God. And that is one we need to outdo clericalism. Also the religious communities in the parish. They are not the labor force or the task force that is uh, un- under us. They are collaborating with us. So they should be collaborators. So the equality, respect that we need to give to them. So that in order to make a people of God. A community, a faith community. Then there are various other things Pope Francis talks which can, be, which can really be a block in being the aroma of Christ. Gossiping. Today gossiping is so much among the priests, among the religious and that destroys the church, destroys persons, destroys communities. Gossiping. And then uh, this is uncharitably talking about others instead of praying for those persons or helping them out. Gossiping. We need to avoid that. Gossiping. Gossiping, Pope Francis calls gossiping as a terrorism. It destroys the church, gossiping. Anonymous letters. That is another cowardishness. That is the work of the devil. Writing anonymous letters to tarnish the image of the church, to the image of persons in the church. Today that is rampant. Have you not to give an attention to that? Anonymous letters. And spoiling the other's names. In various addictions in the church today, mobile addictions, pornographic, drugs, alcohol, all these things takes away the aroma of Christ. We as people who are chosen, specially chosen, anointed, consecrated, can we afford to do that? Can we spoil the temple that the Holy Spirit dwells? That we are supposed to be the means for blessing and grace for our people? Supposed to pray for them, take their prayers to God, bless them. And can we afford to be people, addicted people into all these type of things, addictions, various addictions. Another thing is using the people. Today there are all that sexual abuse. That is again as we read in the false shepherds in the uh, book of prophet Ezekiel. False shepherds, are we not that? Using our people the sexual abuse and all these things. And then again, financial irregularities. Financial irregularities, all these are in the leaders today. Today, leadership in the church is a big question. Are we really having the aroma of Christ as leaders in the church, as bishops, priests, religious? Today we need to examine ourselves. We are caught up with all these type of evils in us. And this retreat, let this retreat help us to come out of it. And so we need to really uh, take this chance to really uh, come out of this and go before the Lord, repent over it and ask the Lord pardon. Let his merciful love forgive us and refine us, um, purify us and make us to be the real aroma of Christ. So, I in a special way pray for you. Let us turn to the Lord and ask His powerful anointing over us in order to make us to be the aroma of Christ. Thank you. Thank you.